and welcome to Sunny Speak. I'm your host, Lisa Valiente O'Brien, and it's my pleasure to have you along with us today on the North Shore of Massachusetts as we visit the art studio of our very special guest, Rob Surrett. Through the creation of his Hero Art Program, Rob has performed over 4,000 speed painting shows where his unique and entertaining style has captured mm -hmm. audiences' hearts with his message of kindness and self-empowerment. Rob is also a top-tier master fine artist for Disney, Star Wars, DC Comics, and DreamWorks. These accolades have earned him two appearances on The Today Show and Good Morning America, as well as appearances on The Tonight and Oprah Winfrey shows. Please join us now as we journey into the amazing artistry of Rob Surratt. Rob Surratt, welcome to Sunny Speak, and thanks for hosting us here today in your beautiful studio. Thank you. I wanted to say first off that we have so many areas to cover of your accomplishments, but I think it might be best to start at the beginning. So let's start at your childhood, oh, sure. and maybe you can talk to us when you first developed a love for art and painting. Yep. I remember it so clearly. I was about three years old, and my grandparents lived upstairs from us. And my grandfather was retired as a plasterer, but he would draw as a hobby. And I would sit there, and I would watch him, and I remember he had a, an old-fashioned um, knife where he would whittle the pencils because I guess growing up he didn't have a pencil sharpener and I would see him and he would just draw really well as a hobby and I would be fixated I would think this is magical so I wasn't learning from him he wasn't teaching me I would go downstairs because my brain was wired this way and I would just start drawing like he did and I remember specifically my dad said one day okay so you just trace that and I remember thinking no I just drew that okay wait your grandfather just drew that no, I drew that. Not that I, w I was amazing, but the wiring in my brain was there. It was always there, right? Yeah. And then tell us maybe the chronology of your career, because it has taken, there, as we mentioned at the open, there are just so many accomplishments, so many facets to your career. Could you go through maybe a little bit of an overview sure. of how the transformation in your career has happened? And then later we'll get more in depth about each of those areas. But okay. So I won the school art fair every single year from probably kindergarten through j junior year in high school, mm -hmm. not senior year, <laughs> junior year in high school. So I won it, you know, 15 years in a row or whatever. Then when it came to college, I wanted a practical major so I could get a practical job. So I majored in computer programming. So my first job after college was a computer job. And I was so envious of my coworkers because at lunchtime, all they would talk about is computers. They had an air mattress underneath everyone's desk where they would sleep overnight. Mm -hmm. And I'd come the next morning and they're still there. And the, I was so envious because they would have worked for free if they had to. They were so in love with this computer job, except for me. And I thought to myself, how can I be as happy as they are in life? I love drawing, I love art, I love visual arts. So therefore I'm going to take the risk and I'm going to dare to go after that, which is where my heart was always pulling me. So, so I was still living at home, so I didn't have really many bills. Mm -hmm. So it was the perfect time for me to launch an art career. So it took four years to get full time. And I tried a bunch of different things. And what really took off was my speed painting show at schools. Now, where did you get your education in art? Oh, I didn't have, I didn't go to art school. I never took any art classes. Oh my goodness. So you just worked on this on your own and you just yeah. honed your craft right and you're very yeah own. so even with uh, speed painting how that happened is our high school teacher I say our because my wife and I went to the same high school mm -hmm. she asked if I would come back for career day and right? was that in Arlington is that what you actually were? no we went to Matinon High School in Cambridge okay which was a regional private Catholic school so okay. our favorite teacher said can you come back and speak to the kids for career day and I was like I'm like 22 years old and I don't really have the years as some of these people, so what do I talk about? She says, you're a good kid and you're an inspirational kid. Just give them something fabulous and positive. So I said, okay. So my high school audience was usually a really tough audience. And I thought, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a speed painting of Martin Luther King while playing his speech. So I got my radio from my bedroom, did. <laughs> played his speech on a cassette tape. No video, no music, and I speed painted Martin Luther King, and I spoke very briefly on the and, microphone. And how long did that take? 18 minutes. Oh. Which that's not really speed painting, but I can do the same portrait now in 58 seconds. Oh my God. 
So 18 minutes now, it seems like an eternity. But the kids loved it. It was different. And the words I spoke, I mean, just the simplicity of the dark auditorium, black canvas, playing his I Have a Dream speech. And it was, you know, one day away from his um, holiday. So then the second show I got invited to was another school. It was a high school where the class president had just committed suicide. So the student body was hurting so badly. They said, we're bringing in grief counselors and just anyone motivational and positive. We hear you do this speed painting thing and you say some great words on the microphone. Great. So when I went there and did a speed painting and, and spoke from my heart, I got another standing ovation. Because again, it's not show off what I'm doing. It's not a stunt. It's not like I'm talented, you're not. It's a way of catching their attention and reaching their hearts through the creative right side of the brain. And when I spoke those words from my heart, it just registered and they gave me a standing ovation. So I drove home from both of those schools saying, if I could make this a career and just go to different schools and speak inspirational words that everyone needs, needs to hear, especially teenagers, I would be so fulfilled in life. So now that's how it all began. And it took four years to get full time and it took off, I would say like wildfire, but it took four years to get full time. Yeah. And now I'm going to start my 25th year in I was just three ask weeks. How many years? That's amazing. Yeah, over over 4,000 schools. And and we, I do want to delve into that a little further too. But can you explain for us how you receive the inspiration to create in the process? Because it's, mm -hmm. you know, I want to see if I can articulate it so yeah. really people will understand. But the word people use all the time with my show is it's inspiring. And I've heard it so many times, I know that that's what people are expecting and I know that's what I'm known for. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is inspiration? I need to get inspired first before I inspire other people. So what is that? I think literally it means from spirit. To be inspired means from spirit. So when I first thought of this idea to speed paint, I was mowing Mrs. Parrell's lawn in Winchester, <laughs> Massachusetts. And what you're doing when you're mowing a lawn or maybe jogging or driving on the highway is you're kind of in a daydream state where people will miss the exit on the highway. So when I'm mowing the lawn, it just came to me, boom. The big speed paint on a giant canvas in front of an audience of high school kids. I said, I'm gonna blow them away. So it came to me from A to Z in one second. And I wasn't trying to imagine what to do. I wasn't making it up. I wasn't at a drawing board. It just came to me. So there, I was inspired. What does that mean? It came from somewhere. It didn't come from my thinking brain. It didn't come from my imagination. It just came to me. It's almost like I was in an antenna and I was in the right frequency where it came to me. It was literally from the spirit world. Wow. It was, I was inspired. So all my great ideas, I've learned to harness that and I just empty my mind and I open the door with the intent that I want to get inspired. And it could come, of course, from, you know, going to a beautiful concert or seeing an amazing movie or, you know, seeing little puppies or seeing little kids playing in the playground. You feel inspired. Do you know what I mean? Yes. yes. And I keep that part of my mind or part of my soul open mm -hmm. where to then, uh, the intent is I'll just get blasted with an idea instantly doesn't come from me. Wow. Some people out there will understand this, some people won't. But they, they know that it's accurate. I've studied this for so many years. Where do my ideas come from? The, do you ever say, I have the greatest idea? Well, people will understand that. Yes. I've got the greatest idea. And for subject matter, when you're doing the hero art programs, for the heroes, how do you choose who is going to be the hero to bring to that particular school? Well, it's the same show always, so I don't pick and choose. It's been the same show for 25 years. So there, I did sort of think, you know, uh, you know, my parents are both teachers. We can't paint all men. Yeah. Okay, great. So I went through all the lists of top 100 most influential people in history. Okay. So whether it's Time Magazine or the Biography Channel or oh, Newsweek, okay. those lists are all pretty similar. I see. So I picked the ones that I knew kids would recognize the, the most. Okay. That yeah. makes so that's sense. how that all came to be. Yeah. But again, I've harnessed that ability to get inspired. And I've learned that that's where the most amazing ideas come from. And so when people say, I have the greatest idea, I know how to get that like instantly. If I need an idea for a project, like a company contacts me and they say, we need a creative idea. I said, just give me like 
20, 20 to 45 minutes and I'm going to get back to you and I'm going to have an idea and I just open myself up. Some people could say it's a prayerful state. Some people could say it's a meditative state. It doesn't matter what you call it, but I open myself up to be inspired and I just sit there and I'm not thinking and boom, I'll email them and say, I have an amazing idea. And, there and it's it is. usually a home run of an idea. Not always, but it's, it's, a, it's a great idea. Why do you think it is that your shows resonate so much with kids? What, what is it? it? It's that I'm meant to do this. I'm meant to be in front of an audience of kids. I'm meant to go to five to eight to ten schools a week. I'm meant to, I'm born to do it. So I'm going to say even deeper because I am deep and I think about these things all the time. It's part of my life plan. It yeah. feels effortless. I resonate with them. I love them. They love me. Yes. You know, it, 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 it's just that it, it's what I'm meant to do. It's a passion, you know. Yeah, it's it's magical because when I get there, um, you know, on stage and I'm talking to the kids, it's not about the people who I paint. I don't talk about Abraham Lincoln and Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks other than maybe one sentence or a couple words. Okay. So what it is is I'm trying to inspire the kids that. You know, you can make your dreams come true. You need to believe in yourself. You're, you're significant and special in the world. And these things are so genuine coming from me that they all just sit there. And at first they're trying to think, you know, um, are you for real? Are you scripted? How much does he get paid for this? You know, they're trying to figure it out. But before long, they're just all on board and they just listen. And then they, I get flooded afterwards where they all want to come up and hug me and take pictures and it's not about I'm awesome and I'm showing off it's about I've touched their hearts and I've given them something to go away with. Rob is there a specific story that you can tell about the impact of one of your hero art programs and how it affected a student? There's a story after every single show so after the 4,000 schools I get emails you would not believe some of them are so sad I don't want to say on TV mm -hmm. they're so sad but they said those students came up to thank me and the teachers know that the child's struggle. Oh. So what it meant to them to come up to say hi, thank you to me. My favorite one was this mom emailed me years ago and said, I don't even know who you are, but I need to thank you because my 16-year-old daughter has not talked to me for about a year. And she came home and said, Ma! And she was, all I remember her saying is, Ma, this guy, it, this show was sick which is a compliment. <laughs> she thought it was cool, but that was her only way of saying that it touched her heart. And she's, the mother says, I don't even know what she was talking about. She was, I almost couldn't believe that my daughter was talking to me for the first time in almost a year. She said, I just want to say thank you for that. What was the message that you think, you know, is there a common theme that you feel messages Always. that you're delivering to it, them? It, it's really only one theme. It's that you matter in the world. You're here for a purpose. You're important, you're significant, so you need to find that and own that and harness that and you need to glow from the inside out. So many people are down on the world saying the world isn't giving me what I dream of, but what I tell them it comes from inside. You need to glow from the inside out, then the world will reflect that back to you. The world's not going to give you your dreams necessarily, you need to chase after them with that glowing spirit that you know that you're special and significant. So That's what my show's all about. And then when the kid, I mean, and, then the kids glow because they list, that's the whole theme of this whole 60 minute show, is that you matter in the world, you're alive for a reason, therefore you take that steering wheel and you steer it in whatever direction you want with love and joy and kindness and passion and, and self-love and watch where it takes you Very so the uplifting. speed paintings are all secondary that caught their attention and when i speak those mini speeches that's what it's about and then of course you see people like they kind of wipe in their eyes even little kindergarten kids they kind of hug each other and you'll see teenagers who come up to me like when they flood afterwards so it's not about me being talented that makes it fun but it's that people come up and they say thank you they're like thanks dude that was the coolest thing i've ever seen thank you well and there's a lot of hope there's a lot of yeah. hope in that message that you deliver so it's not like wow that was great and I, I don't get that it's not, wow, I love that, wow, that was fun. It, it, it's not that. It's, dude, thanks so much. Thank you. People come up and say, hey, thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. And they do like this. Wow. <laughs> All right. 
I even hate to change the subject, but we have to get through all of your accolades here. Six world records. I'm going to read them to make sure I don't screw up here. First world record, world peace made with a half of a million of light brights. I think that there might have been, I counted, 83 faces. I'm sure there may be more than that. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us who are some of the faces in that beautiful They're light They're all anonymous. No they one's, are. No one's famous. The okay. 50 faces on the left are all Americans. Yep. The 50 faces on the right are people from other parts of the world. So it was my response to 9-11 where there was a lot of hatred towards Middle Eastern people. And I thought, let's have them all looking at each other in friendship. So on the left, you see a seven-year-old American boy holding his pet dog. And as he's looking across, there's a seven-year-old Norwegian boy holding his pet goat. And they're looking right at each other saying, you're not so different than me. Wow. I just, I was so impressed with the shading and the variation. It just does not, it looks like you painted it with a palette, not light bright lights. Well, it's that's, just yeah, amazing. That's amazing. The thing. If you ever saw it in person, when you look up close, all you see is dots. It's massive. It's 10 feet by 20 feet. It's massive. Wow. And when you stand further and further back, it starts to look, wow. you know, yep. realistic. So, okay. Second world record, a lipstick portrait of Nicki Minaj made with Eight, almost 9,000 tubes of lip, lipstick, right? <laughs> that took a long, long, long time. Third world record, Tom Brady crayon mosaic made with 20,724 crayons. And did the students help you with that one? Yes. Okay. Yep. Then we have fourth, a gumball mosaic of Taylor Swift using 17,625 17, gumballs. I don't even know where you decided to choose these mediums to work with. It's very creative. The fifth world record is with perler beads, almost 70,000 perler beads. And the sixth is your latest, correct? Yes. Um, I beat my own world record. With Ed Sheeran gumball mosaic. Yep, that's um, a tribute to Red Nose Day. Now you just asked, I don't know how yes, you get Yes, and I did want you to answer that, please. <laughs> I'm inspired again. It's that I feel inspired. The idea of Nicki Minaj lipstick, I saw her on TV with the bright lipstick and I'm like, I, I, the, the yeah. idea just came to me like in one second. I call Ripley's Believe It or Not and said, I have the most amazing idea, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, I love it. They when did. can you get it done? I'm like, I'll start, t I'll start today if you want. Oh. I had to figure out how to do that. Where did you get all the lipstick? Did somebody donate it or did you have to buy all those Yeah, everyone always of thinks lipstick. they mentioned this one company and they said, oh. Well, I, you don't have to mention it, but yeah. Uh, but, but you, I, I got that was a lot. I, I had to get the least expensive ones just to make it Yeah, I'm sure price. you did. I'm sure. And, and there's even a pushpin Jesus, although he's not in the world record. I just really thought that was very creative too. And do you have a template? that you use how when these massive pieces yeah. how do you do the blueprint for that like when the kids are putting yeah. the crayons in how do you know that's do a you great a question uh, i do have a blueprint which i created and it's not the press of a button on a computer but it's a lot of time creating a grid pattern where a i break grid. it down like a checkerboard so i know each square needs to match whatever color I see in that square okay. of the grid. Especially when the kids are helping. Yeah, but then at the end I need to look at it. Yeah, like my, my most famous one was the Tom Brady, Bill Belichick double Lego masterpiece. Oh yes, that was what, on the news. It went viral. So I needed to look at that aside from my grid and eyeball it as I would a portrait okay. with paint. To t tweak certain things. To make right, sure it really looked like him. At first with the Legos, Tom Brady was looking too sunburned. <laughs> His lips needed to be a specific color so it didn't look like he had lipstick. I'm sorry I appreciated that. So I did blends, yeah. spray paints, so it was a lot of just looking at it. Yeah. But um, That was a beautiful piece, by the way. That was really, that, that came you. out really nice. We mustn't forget fine arts masterpieces for Disney, Star Wars, DC Comics, and DreamWorks. And I just would love to find out how that all came about because that's a huge, your top tier, which is the top Yep. Level, right? Yeah, there are different levels. Like, let's just say there's a level where people will create t-shirts or mugs or small prints that are not framed. They're in, like, shrink wrap behind a cash register. There's mm -hmm. different tiers. So, yeah, okay. I, I am the top tier. But how it came about is nothing short of magical because I was on my computer right here on a Friday night and I was looking at Disney artists, in particular my favorite. And just a few days later, Disney contacted me because you can't solicit them. Really? Can't. It's their policy because yeah. you may have an idea for a movie and once they open your letter, 
they may have had a similar idea, and now it's a liability because you're going to say, "Hey, you, you stole my idea." So their well, that company is even policy more impressive. Has they... always been they need to seek you out. So I used to ask after years, I would love to work for Star Wars or ah. Disney. How do I get in that door? And they're like, "If you're brilliant enough, they will find you." So from what I understand is. I was seen on the Oprah Winfrey show. They saw my light bright world record and they saw this personal tribute I did on my website to Walt Disney, which I didn't get paid for. I did it out of my own for my own satisfaction. And they saw all those things and they said we would love to bring you on board. Wow. So that was maybe about 6 or 7 years ago and it's been a dream job because one of the first things I asked is do I have to quit going to schools? And they yeah. say no. They said we understand what you do, and we understand that you're good at it, and you're meant to do it. That so we're not so going nice. to take. So you didn't you, have to choose. You can continue that, but you need to give us your time, right. a certain amount of hours per week. And the fact that you can still stay here in Massachusetts. They not, said that. Right? They they said why don't, it makes the most sense. They said to stay where you're the most comfortable. That's so great. with my three young, our three young kids, yeah. it, it made a lot of sense just to stay put. What was the first painting you did for Disney? They left it up to me, so I said, "Hmm, how about I don't know, Mickey and Minnie, the most classic." They said, "It's classic. You'll always do well. That's a great place to start." Oh. So I had to come up with different concepts, and a lot of them they've seen before, like Mickey and Minnie holding hands walking on a beach, or <laughs> sitting at the edge of a dock holding hands looking at the moon. Yeah. So the idea they like the best is Mickey com Minnie coming out of a horse-drawn carriage and they're going into a ball together. Oh. They said we've never seen that. We've never heard of that. Wow. That's so that was my very first one. It took 600 hours, 300 hours to conceptualize. Because everything you see there is made up. It's it's my creation. Nothing is from a movie. Nothing's copied from a museum. Even the little balusters on the staircase, I had to invent everything. Wow. The carriage that, is all mine. And that, and then after that, you had the DC Comics, and then the Star Wars. Everything, you know, ended up following. Yeah. I also want you, if it's okay, to talk briefly because we're on the countdown. Last five minutes here. Um, your TV appearances. How did it come about? Because Oprah and Jay Leno, I mean, that's really big. So that's when big I was stuff. visiting schools, thank you, um, I wanted to get certain corporate events. I wanted to get the big prestigious events, the celebrity events. And I remember hearing quite a bit, well, what do you do? I speed paint. Where have you speed painted? I visit schools. They're like, oh, what else? And that's all. I, I visit schools, but I'm really amazing at it. They're like, oh. It was a low, credible kitty market from a lot of people's point of view. Okay. So I got a little frustrated. So I said, okay, now I need to make myself a little more professional. Uh, not professional, a little more. I wanted to Would put it be myself, like mainstream? Like, I you started to, doing speed painting for shows, right? I wanted to make myself more mainstream on a, high, a bigger platform okay. for, to get more credibility. So I sent out hundreds of videotapes back then, and eventually Good Morning America said we would love to have you on the show. And when I did, it was a success. They said, how come we never heard about you? And I said, okay, honestly, I've been sending videotapes for years. You never got any of them? They said, it's hit or miss. We don't have time to watch them all. We happen to watch yours. It's amazing. So then from there, it snowballed. And then you got the other invitations. Oprah One is led huge. to another. They all led to each other. Right. And, and the other thing was um, some of these speed painting performances now, there was one that you did the painting of Steve and Tyler. So those were happening, were those happening simultane simultaneously or? No, it started off just visiting schools. Okay. And then I got on Good Morning America and then it jumped from all Good Morning America to all the other big TV morning evening talk shows. And then I started to get them the corporate events. Then I started to get the celebrity events. Then I started getting the big prestigious, because I had this, this credibility. Yeah. You know, they're like, we've seen you. We saw you on the Oprah Winfrey show. Yeah. And so there you go. You're all of a sudden at this level. I, right. I was no different than I was five years earlier right. or one year earlier. But in people's minds, they're like, he was on Oprah. That's Rob. He was on yes. Oprah. I get that all the time. Mm -hmm. He was on Oprah. Now, he's a Disney artist. Mm -hmm. I'm the same person. I have the right. same process, the same skill, 
the same yes. talent. And you've gifted a lot of, you know, artwork as well. I, I know that I had seen here that you, um, is Ralph, how do we pronounce Ralph's last Machio. name? Machio. Yeah, Ralph Karate Machio, Kid. Karate Kid. Yeah, and, and you presented Big Bird to Carol Spinney. I think you also did a painting for the Queen of Jordan and yeah. Andrea Bocelli. Tell us about um, the Queen of Jordan. How did that come about? It's part of my global outreach program where I'm trying to reach out to as many world leaders as I can. Uh, Mother Teresa's successor called me on the phone, Sister Nirmala, because I sent a painting to her as a tribute, as a thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, the Princess of Samoa called me one day on the phone, and I was almost like, is this my friend Dave from high school playing a joke? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you know, I've given, um, I gave custom masterpiece to President Obama. They all have a world peace theme, okay. a theme of love, a vibe of humanity. Right. So with the Queen of Jordan, her son was at Georgetown University. He's going to be the king one day. Okay. And she's all, ever since 9-11, she's tried to bridge that gap between the East and the West, saying, we're not so much different than you all. Right. We're not bad people. And this is after 9-11. So I did a beautiful painting of her palace with a rainbow in the sky and doves. And we had a poem professionally written which got sent as just a, as a private gift, personal gift. Before we end, I have to ask, do you have a hero? Is there somebody that is a hero to you? You may have many, but is there one that comes to mind? Um, Walt Disney, yeah. Okay. Uh, without a doubt. Uh, one of the why is because I'm most similar to him, and I resonate with him, and I understand him. Okay. We're very, very similar, and people will say, oh, that's a little arrogant to say, but that's just how I feel. Now, with all the other heroes that I paint, I take what I like about them, and I try to make it my own. Okay. And also, for those who may be struggling with self-doubt, discouragement about their craft, what, you know, what, their job, whatever they're doing, yeah. do you have a, a message for them? Yeah. They say, like, only, like they say 74% of Americans don't like getting up in the morning and going to their jobs. So there's so much frustration. People will think, is this all there is in life? What I want to say is there's so much more depth than you think. There's so much more to life than you think. Uncover it. Don't leave any stone unturned. Keep pushing yourself. Never, ever, ever, ever give up on yourself. Well, that's a wonderful way to end this interview. Rob, thank you so much for hosting us today. We really, really appreciate having been your guest oh. and sharing into your magical world. <laughs> Could you let our viewers know where they can check out more of your work, please, your website address? Yeah, my website is uh, um, www.amazingheroart.com. But I think I'm even more proud of my Facebook page, which okay. is Amazing Hero Art, Amazing because I Hero. update it almost daily. Okay, so all right. It's, it's more current, it's more up to date. Right. And that gives more of a personal glimpse as Wonderful. to who I am. That's great. And don't forget to check us out at sunnyspeak.org. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us today.